which to me is an embarrassment to our code, and our code has embarrassed us. Our code has been embarrassed a number of times over the last few seasons. Oh, no! That's a disgrace! That is a disgrace! Rugby League has come a long way from the simpler, pre-Super League era where the game was just played. A put-down wasn't micro-analyzed with six different camera angles, a team was not capable of poaching stars from the other sides three quarters of the way through a season, and the gap between the top and bottom sides wasn't so stark. Don't get me wrong, I love this sport, but I just wanted to put some of my theoretical and flawed takes on three issues that I think are plaguing the sport today. Remember, these are just some of my opinions and I'm open to discussion in the comments. So, the first issue. The NRL is no longer competitive. The golfing class between the NRL's top 8 or 9 sides and the rest of the competition has only widened in recent years. We have seen record win margins over this season, especially in round 23 with that 72-6 victory for the Roosters over the Tigers, the cherry on top. The scorelines over round 23 were indicative of what is often seen towards the back end of NRL seasons as the bottom sides fall away. It begs the question, what should the NRL do? The NRL's end of season ladder shows a bigger gap for the bottom dwelling sides as the lesser teams haven't been capable of winning even a third of their games. In 2022, we had five teams below a 30% win percentage. That is the most amount of teams ever in NRL history. I mean, the bottom six sides overall really sucked and were at times just helpless against the top 10 sides. It begs the question, how do we fix this? Well, my solution is the draft, or at least some form of drafting system to level the playing field. This wouldn't be a draft that copies that of the NBA or the NFL, where teams tank for their first pick in the draft. I believe this could be done in a much more entertaining way that could benefit both the fans, but the NRL itself. Whilst the top eight teams battle it out for a premiership, the bottom eight sides will play a knockout format for the top draft pick. Now yes, this is much easier than it sounds, and there is a lot to consider. Firstly, for the NRL, I think it's a win-win. I would cut the regular season competition to 20 games and use the following 5 rounds for the finals and draft pick finals. This way the competition finishes a lot earlier, allows for more rest and more time for international competition which seems to be overlooked often in the modern game. I feel the first 5 rounds is often useless as the contenders and pretenders have already been decided. There would be much more incentive for fans to watch their sides that are in the bottom 8 as there are draft positions on the line. It would work the same way as the normal finals, with teams 9 to 12 playing the qualifying finals, whilst teams 13 to 16 would play elimination finals with a much more difficult route. The draft doesn't have to be huge, I think two rounds for a total of 32 picks would suffice. The question that's often brought up is that a draft would discourage NRL nurseries like the one at Penrith to continue to develop their players, but there are definitely ways around this. The Panthers, for example, in my draft adaptation, could put protections on let's say three of their best academy prospects, which wouldn't allow opposition clubs to draft those players. Clubs could also be compensated in possibly salary cap increases over the next season on how many players are picked from their club in the draft. For example, 100,000 per every pick within the top five, 50,000 per every pick in the top 15, and so on and so forth for those clubs. This may work in favour for NRL sides as players may present more value for a Aware of issues such as the simple finances to make all this work, it's obvious that NRL players don't make nearly as much as players in the NFL or NBA, so moving interstate to get drafted may not be feasible to a lot of young athletes. That is a drawback that really doesn't have a clear solution outside of funding from the NRL to make that transition smoother. The playing pool in the draft should extend past the youngsters and include guys that have been slaving away in the New South Wales or Queensland Cup and have under 5 NRL appearances. This could give clubs access to hidden gems that could possibly kickstart their career and would widen the overall playing pool. This is obviously all hypothetical and just a suggestion. I'm sure there is a lot of tinkering that would be needed to make something like this a reality, but I think the overall message of a draft here is valid. The entertainment factor of the knockout games for the bottom eight sides keeps their fans involved with the sport. The interest that a draft brings also keeps fans engaged with the sport over the off season. And I feel it's desperately needed to make the sport more well-rounded and competitive. Okay, so here's my second gripe with the NRL. It's the NRL loan system. 
The loans in the NRL have been a hot topic across the sport. I'm not entirely against the loan system as well, it's just the current system that is in place. We have seen the likes of David Norfoluma join the Storm late this season and Tavita Pengai Jr. joining Penrith late last year. Both leading bottom feeding clubs, these late season transfers have caused controversy and for good reason. With the loan system seemingly introduced during the pandemic to provide comfort for sides like the Warriors or to help young talent flourish like with what we saw with Harry Grant in 2020 with the West Tigers, these Norfoluma types of loans are causing an imbalance in fair competition. Whilst they are beneficial to both teams in the loan transaction, the rest of the competition are hard done by, as these acquisitions make squad management almost unimportant and the loan team instantly better. There is no longer a need to be careful when building your 30-man squad when you can just poach a quality player from a bottom side. To fix the current loan system, more guidelines need to be made. To encourage loans that promote young and fringe talent, these are the rules I think should be put in place. Players with 5 or less appearances under the age of 25 could be eligible for loans, whilst players over the age of 25 with a maximum of 50 NRL appearances are also eligible. This allows for youngsters to get some first grade experience, whilst veterans are given the opportunity to showcase their ability in hopes for another contract so their career doesn't stagnate with blunders and the bunker. Wow, there have been some bad calls this season, some comical and some game deciding. Off the top of my head, I could name you three from this year. The clear obstruction that was a try in the Knights-Broncos game. The head-high try saver from Tui Pilotu, which was given as a penalty leading to a para try in the next set. And one of the worst calls in NRL history where the West Tigers were absolutely robbed. Um, as a Tigers fan, I wanted to throw my phone at the wall. That's beside the point though. The calls were all completely garbage, like extremely bad. I mean, the whole NRL social media community was in agreement, which is a rare occurrence. With calls all subjective, it's hard to say how the NRL can solve these blunders. I think with the previous mistakes mentioned, there was just a clear lack of common sense involved. Black and white rules are good in theory, but in the case of the high contact that costs Manly a game, in what was monsoon type weather, where Hayes Perham clearly slips and is almost horizontal before the shot is put on him. The Tigers vs Cowboys game where Felt decides to flop 15 metres away from the ball, it's clear to every viewer that it is not a penalty. Personally, I feel the bunker should be restricted in their input on the game to when the side uses a captain's challenge. We could give the side two challenges to use per game, but they are the only way the bunker can be involved. These could be used for everything, from try scoring attempts to knock-ons and high tackles, but they would have to be used wisely. This will limit players from staying down after tackles, a current issue in the game, as I'm sure players will be less likely to burn a challenge on a 50-50 tackle if they think it might not go their way. This game would flow a lot better and put more emphasis on using technology more scarcely to actually remove the blunder rather than create it. I'm going to be honest, I don't think there is a clear solution for the NRL's officiating woes. What do you viewers think? Should we give the bunker more input with the use of common sense away from the black and white rules? Do we restrict the bunker's input to just try scoring opportunities and dangerous tackles? Or do we scrap the bunker altogether? Also, the draft and loan system changes. Let me know what you viewers think about those. Remember, these are just rough suggestions to get you guys thinking and for you to provide your own discourse below. Like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want more Aussie content. I'll see you guys next time.